Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the most powerful MacBook Pro ever made. This is the i9 Vega 20 equipped model, late 2018, against the workstation powerhouse of a machine, the iMac Pro. In terms of video editing, I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro. So all three software that's the most popular out there right now. And running a bunch of tests and codecs to show you guys which one you should choose if you're even having this kind of thought. Now, of course, I'm gonna have both models linked in the video description below if you guys wanna go check it out. And I know some of you guys might be thinking, Max, I know you've compared the Vega 20 to the previous graphics cards, the previous models, uh, different options that you can get with it. You've shown off how powerful it is, how big of an upgrade that Vega 20 graphics card made uh, for MacBook Pros, but this is crazy. Comparing a laptop to a workstation machine with eight cores, a Vega 56 graphics card, what are you doing? Well, that is a very interesting thought, and you may be right, but in fact, I actually have had some people ask me to make this comparison. There are people out there, and I actually am a person that's included in that bunch, uh, that have to travel for their work, or you're trying to edit on the go, you have an office, but you also need to do some work at home, uh, you're flying, you're in a hotel room, but you still have to cut your 4K video, you still have to get projects done for clients, for YouTube, so you don't have the convenience of having a workstation machine that is just set up in one place and always being able to edit and even then I will say that you're probably gonna be surprised by some of these results about how close these two machines can get in another test this is gonna be a huge win for the iMac Pro now before I jump in and show you guys the benchmarks and the video editing results I want to say that the price points between these two are not that far off especially if you're gonna be adding on a 5k LG ultra fine display the same panel that is inside the iMac Pro that's what I personally use so when I get into the office I want to edit off a large display I plug it in with a single cable and I'm good to go at that point if you add the display the MacBook Pro is actually more expensive but at that point you have two displays so it's kind of a toss-up and if you saw my previous video you don't really need to buy the i9 version the i7 is basically just as fast what I'm trying to say is the price point is almost identical if you're gonna be using an external display which I think a lot of you guys out there if you're a professional you will Jumping into Geekbench 4 in the single core CPU test, the MacBook Pro actually has a higher score. That's because the, the processor actually runs at a higher frequency. So if you're doing very simple basic tasks, it's actually slightly faster. Going into multi-core, of course, the eight cores in the iMac have more power than the six cores in the MacBook Pro, but it's actually not that big of a difference because that processor in there is quite powerful. Now, many of you guys know that Geekbench 4 doesn't push all your cores to the limit. I always mention this in my videos. So taking a look at Cinebench R15, which will put a real world kind of rendering load, 100% CPU load, uh, there you'll actually see a big difference in performance. And the main reason is because the MacBook Pro just doesn't have enough cooling capacity to keep that six core i9 chip down uh, cool enough to run at its full speed. Of course, if you're doing video editing, you're not only looking at the CPU performance, but also the graphics performance. So let's take a look at Geekbench 4's graphics results. And here we see that the Vega 56 in the iMac Pro gets double the score, more than double, than the Vega 20 inside of the MacBook Pro. But with that said, those are some pretty high scores for a MacBook. Now let's jump into Bruce X. This is a quick test in Final Cut. And here our MacBook Pro took 46 seconds to render this 5K timeline, whereas the iMac Pro took just 23 seconds. So that's a gauge for you of like the raw graphics graphics performance in Final Cut. So I got my little cheat sheet here. We're gonna start out stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. I don't know about you guys, but when I shoot footage that I want to be smooth, like slider, gimbal shots, stuff like that, I want it to be real smooth. So I do quite a bit of stabilization just to make it perfect. Now here is where things get a little bit interesting. In Final Cut, the Mac Pro took eight seconds to stabilize this clip and the iMac Pro took six and a half seconds. I wanna point out, Eight seconds is super impressive. That's like twice as fast as the previous best MacBook Pro, which came out like four or five months ago. Very impressive. Now looking at DaVinci Resolve, we have 18 seconds for the MacBook Pro and 13 seconds for the iMac Pro. And in Premiere Pro, because it doesn't make good use of the CPU and graphics card, it barely uses any of it. We have four minutes and 41 seconds for the MacBook Pro, four minutes and 45 seconds for the iMac because the uh, frequency is slightly slower on the CPUs. So that is very interesting. We have a lot more raw power in the iMac Pro 
out, but the results are fairly similar. I think you'll be quite surprised with the next test as well, but first, no matter if you choose to buy a new iMac Pro or a MacBook Pro, the first app that you should download is Dashlane, an amazing password manager that you can use for free. For years, I used the same password everywhere, so when one account was hacked, I was sweating bullets. Thankfully, Dashlane made it fast and easy to secure my accounts. Dashlane could be your one-stop shop for your digital identity that I've been using to secure all my private info. Their fantastic app will automatically sign you in, generate and remember all of your passwords so you don't have to. It also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information and credit cards, saving you time when shopping online, a VPN to prevent prying eyes from tracking you, and dark web monitoring to see if your information is being bought and sold illegally. Legally. Give it a try for free and go to dashlane.com slash max and use the promo code max for 10% off if you decide to upgrade to premium. Jumping into a 5 minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied. In Final Cut, yes, the iMac Pro is faster, but not by much. And if we take a look at DaVinci Resolve, we get a similar result. Yes, it's faster, but it's barely faster. Jumping into Premiere Pro, this is where we're seeing a difference here with the MacBook Pro taking 20 minutes to render this 5K project. So that is very interesting. If we look at Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, which are really well optimized to make use of all your graphics in your processor hardware, the results are very close. And as far as the timeline performance, the smoothness is basically identical with uh, both of these machines. Now let's take a look at a similar project, but this time using 8-bit HEVC files. And I'll just spare you guys the time. The results on these machines are basically identical. Both of them cut through this footage like butter. They both have hardware HEVC decoding, so that is not an issue. And the results are are practically the same, it's so close. And now we're gonna jump to some 10-bit HEVC files. These files are really difficult to work through. It's basically impossible with my 2016 MacBook Pro that's top of the line. Uh, but with that said, if you have the latest MacBook Pro or an iMac Pro, both of them don't have any issues. And I'll say in the timeline performance, uh, it's actually better on the MacBook Pro, it's smoother. Now the iMac Pro can still handle it, it's fine, but this thing uses less CPU power and I feel it generally it's a little bit smoother when you're editing. For the results in Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, yes, the iMac Pro is faster, but not by that much. But in Premiere Pro, it takes 35 minutes on the MacBook Pro and just three minutes and 50 seconds on the iMac Pro. That is very interesting. I retested this over and over again. This is not a fluke. All the settings are correct. I'm guessing that Premiere Pro is just not using the hardware properly in the MacBook Pro. And I will say at this point that if you're editing on a laptop and you're editing H.264 footage or 8 or 10-bit H.265 and exporting to 8-bit, uh, just don't use Premiere Pro on your MacBook Pro. You guys see it takes way, way longer. In that case, if you can't use Final Cut, you don't like the layout, check out DaVinci Resolve. It's not that hard to switch over. And you'll get much better performance. Now, with that said, if you're working with 10-bit footage and you're exporting to 10-bit, so most of you guys that are doing that, there's not that big of a group of you, uh, but it's mainly if you're exporting HDR video to the net, this is where Premiere Pro is actually surprising. Now, all these laptops take much longer than they do if you're exporting to 8-bit. They're not properly supporting a hardware encoding just yet, but Premiere Pro is quite a bit faster. And then, of course, if we compare the MacBook Pro to the iMac, the iMac is much faster overall. So I'll say uh, if you're working with 10-bit footage and you're exporting HDR 10-bit, uh, use the iMac Pro and if you're on Premiere, that's kind of the best bet for now, but hopefully soon we'll get some software fixes so that we can use hardware encoding if you wanna do HDR video for the net and get a proper good solution. All right guys, so are you ready to see where the iMac Pro is really going to shine now? We are gonna go and jump into Canon Cinema Raw Lite from the C200. As I always say, it's called Lite, but it's not. It's very difficult to edit. Uh, and the iMac Pro is starting to take a lead here. We're looking at color graded 4K60 footage with a LUT applied, and in some cases, we get about 50% faster result, and in some cases, about twice as fast. And as far as the actual timeline performance, uh, the iMac Pro can basically run this footage at full resolution with a LUT without dropping frames at 60 frames per second, where on the Mac Pro in Final Cut, we get 30 frames per second. In DaVinci Resolve, it's actually a little bit better, 34 frames per second. And uh, in Premiere Pro, on the MacBook Pro, it is pretty terrible. I kind of wouldn't suggest it. In the past, I would just say don't do it or create proxy files. You can now edit raw footage um, from the Canon C200 on a MacBook. So that is quite impressive. 
But either way, if this is what you do and you don't have to be portable, go with the iMac Pro. So now let's finish off strong looking at 4.5K red raw. This is graded with two LUTs applied. And in Final Cut, uh, we get almost twice as fast with the iMac Pro. In DaVinci Resolve, it's actually not that big of a difference as far as the render and encoding. And in Premiere Pro, our MacBook took almost 21 minutes compared to the iMac Pro that took just under six minutes. So that's another massive difference as far as the encoding time. So there you go, guys. That's how these two computers compare if you want to edit 4K video in a bunch of different codecs. Overall, I will just say that I'm quite surprised by how well uh, the MacBook Pro does. I did not expect it to keep up with a workstation powerhouse machine like this one. Of course, if you're editing raw footage uh, or if you want to put out 10-bit footage, HDR, where it's not hardware encoded, that really needs all the grunt work from that 8-core processor that's in there, you're gonna get faster results. But for a lot of you guys that are using a codex that do have specific hardware chips that decode it and encode it, like H.264 footage, or if you're working with ProRes, uh, or if you're working with 8-bit or even 10-bit HEVC without outputting to 10-bit, man, that Mac Pro Pro is very impressive and it is much more powerful than what we had in the past. So let me know if you guys are choosing one of these or if you chose one already, let me know why. Of course, I will have links in the video description. If you guys have any questions, ask and I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, once again, a big thank you to Dashlane for sponsoring this channel. I highly appreciate it and I do highly recommend them. I've actually been using them for a couple of years now. Uh, I think actually it's been maybe like a year and a half, but I've paid for two full years. Um, so I really enjoy it. It's been really helpful not to have like the same password for over 200 different logins which yes, that's what I had and it was very, very dumb. Now I have these crazy like numeric generated passwords and everything stored in my apps and stuff like that. So definitely go check them out. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max and I will see you guys in the next video.